Hello, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Steps Basic, and welcome back to my community show. <laughs> anyway, now that we have made it through another week, it's time for us to relax a little bit, unwind from all the violence and, and hectic nastiness that we've put through in all the video games that we've played this week, and just sit back and talk for a minute. Now, I wanted to talk a little bit about something I mentioned in a previous video, specifically the idea of microcosm. And I always thought this was a fascinating idea, but I did, unfortunately, use it a little incorrectly in my last in the, the video I used it in, and that I referred to, you know, something representing a small portion but not the larger portion whereas the idea of a microcosm is like a small slice of the world that represents the world as a whole or small slice of something that represents the larger something and in that aspect yes very much so the internet is in fact a microcosm in which case or in which uh, situation was where we can look at it and see so many different aspects of the world in which we live in unfortunately as I've mentioned in another video of mine, uh, the United States and the world as a whole cannot be represented by any one small microcosm. Now, getting down to the nitty gritty of it all, you may see a you may see some similarities amongst the people of the United States, amongst the people of Europe, amongst the people of North and South America, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, you know what I mean? But for the most part the microcosm thereof would be mm, far more conflicted than if you were to take an even micro -er cosm if that's an actual word <laughs> i know it's not but you know we're going to use it anyway micro micro -er. can't even do ours in that one um see the thing of it is like i've mentioned a few times before on this channel that the united states is not something you can look at and say everybody in the united states is like this and unfortunately, in that aspect of things, we see that a lot coming from mostly people who don't live in the United States, but also on occasions people who do live in the United States. They often point and say, the United States is such and such. The United States does this. The United States is that. And unfortunately, we cannot actually say that. As I've mentioned, of course, before, if you look at even something so simple as New York versus Virginia... Um, which are, I was going to say we're less than a thousand miles apart, but you know, it's, it's, it's still a fairly decent distance between the two of us. But as such, even that little bit of a distance creates such a huge variety of people in between. Virginia is almost nothing like New York, except in the aspect of where you would say that we both contain Americans, people who live in America. And uh, as such, it's uh, fairly simple to say that we're both American. But that's basically where the similarities start to fall apart, because then you start looking at even something as simple as racial breakdown, looking at uh, gender and whatnot. You start to see various different political leanings between the two places. I know it's kind of a weird thing to say, but Virginia, in my experience from what I've seen in the past, politically... We tend to vote blue, but we are also majority red, which is a weird thing to do. I don't understand it very much. Of course, I could be completely wrong on that. I don't like to pay too much attention to politics, because honestly, especially these days, it's just a matter of people shouting at each other and trying to be the loudest people in the room. And, uh, well, it ain't working out for everybody. But, so... When using the term microcosm or, you know, a, a small subset that represents a larger selection, there it, it would be really difficult to find one that would properly represent America. In that video when I was talking about and used the uh, example of a microcosm or used the, the term microcosm, I um, was referencing that things that the Internet says we experience on a day-to-day -day basis are not things that we experience on a day-to-day -day basis. And as such, I also went on to talk about the fact that that's not even entirely true. Taking example, the idea of Karens used uh, where if, depending on where you work, you may not encounter Karens on a day-to-day -day basis. Of course, where you live will highly determine that. And a lot of that stuff is derived from 
places you live, i.e. you are existing within a microcosm or, you know, such and such. And as such, if you were to look at America as a whole and try to represent it with a microcosm, the closest you're going to get is the internet. <laughs> because the internet takes a compilation, compilation of various factors of everybody from everywhere within the United States, as well as places, you know, abroad, places that don't exist within the United States, and smashes them together into a large mass of people yelling at each other and competing to try to be the loudest ones in the room. <laughs> it's kind of funny how that works. No, it's not necessarily a bad thing, because I feel like it's it's important for us to find a place where the entire world can come together. In my opinion, I think that the world would be such a better place if we didn't exist with such huge differences. Now, of course, better is a subjective term, because it would be far more boring if everybody shared the same ideas and everybody shared the same beliefs. Boring to a degree that, you know, it would be safer, possibly, but at the same time, we as humans don't like boring. We as humans always try to find a way to make things different. And that's one thing I think makes it so hard to create an actual microcosm. Now, there are places and things that can represent smaller things. Like, if you take a, a any random city within Virginia, chances are that city will be a fairly accurate representation or microcosm of the state of Virginia. And it might even extend a little bit beyond that into parts of North Carolina, Georgia, and even into Maryland and D.C. area, on account of the fact that we do all live within a close proximity. And that sort of thing is an interesting idea because you will find a lot of people who are similar to Canadians within America if you go up north places that are on the border, you will start to find people who share more op opinions, beliefs, and such, and you can create a microcosm that branches between the two countries. And that's kind of an interesting aspect. Now, I've mentioned before that I, uh, I didn't exactly grow up typically American, as it were. I often talk about the fact that I grew up in Mexican-American culture, and that's how I was raised. I, my community, where I grew up from. Now, Obviously, I am white as the driven snow, and if you were to look at my genealogy, you would see a lot of... And as such, I did stand out, stand out a very lot back home. And so I threw off the microcosm. But as such, back home we had a... Uh, we had a line, as it were. You could either adapt and adopt, or you can resist and, well, die. <laughs> Not literally die, but, you know. And uh, as such, I grew up in that culture, and I adopted and adapted to that culture, so I am culturally Mexican-American. Now, I won't say specifically I am truly Mexican, because, well, even though a lot of the things that I learned and, and, and took from my culture were specifically Mexican, I also adopted a lot of the American culture as the entire area was. So as such, I adapted into the microcosm, even though I specifically didn't fit it racially. Culturally, I did. And honestly, it was one of my favorite things about home. And every time I watch movies like Encanto and, and Coco, I start to get nostalgic for home. Every time I hear a mariachi band playing, I'm like, ah, I kind of miss it. <laughs> and uh yeah it's been a weird thing you know leaving home like the way i did and arriving out here in virginia which is steeped in heavy american culture as it were being a southern state as it were and whatnot it, it is heavily steeped in american culture take that as you will because america being the great melting pot has adopted and adapted a lot of different cultures into what we have now. <sighs> but it was still weird. And I can tell you one thing from experience growing up where I did, as a minority within the or a minority of the majority within my own country, it was a very strange thing to leave my microcosm of, 
you know, southern Arizona and go into the greater America as a, as a whole, the greater United States as a whole, and start to see people who look more like me. I hated it. <laughs> I thought it was incredibly weird. And, like, seeing people who were paler than me, people who were matching my same complexion, people with, you know, the same style of hair and whatnot, I didn't like it. It was unnatural to me because I grew up in that microcosm and now I'm approaching a different microcosm, one that I'm supposed to feel more comfortable in, right? But I didn't because it wasn't my microcosm. It wasn't my small section of the world. It was somebody else's because it wasn't my culture. As such, I have adapted and, and grown, as it were, throughout the years into fitting in a little bit better, as it were. But I still long for the days that I left behind, long for my friends that I left behind, and, and uh, the carne sadas. Ah, now I'm getting nostalgic. Ah. But as they say, you, never, you can never go home, right? I know that's what they say, even though I don't want to believe it. <laughs> I'm not even the same kid I was before I left, because I was a far more timid kid. And... Uh, having to adapt and adopt into new and different microcosms as I went, you know, from going from the high school student to the military to living in Virginia, you know, heck, even living from Washington to living in Virginia. And I do like to say that I am pretty adaptable. I roll with the punches fairly easy and I uh, can change pretty quick, but even still, changing so much is just different. It's wrong. Feels dirty. <laughs> but hey, uh, hopefully this has helped you to understand a little bit more about microcosms. But I do want to go on to, to, to say that like every time I see somebody pop up with, I heard that Americans such and such, like the more recent one I think was, I heard that Americans boil their hot dogs and I'm like, or boil their sausages and I'm like, which Americans? I mean, what are you talking about here? talking about the entirety of America. We have so many different cultures, so many different races. I, personally, boil my sausages in beer. And specifically, if it's a Mexican sausage, I will boil it in a Mexican beer. If it's a German sausage, I'll boil it in a German beer. And then I'll finish it up on the grill. Sausages like that, beautiful, delicious. But to just boil them in straight water, I think that's disgusting. And <laughs> it kills a lot of the flavor of it. So when you say that, I look at you, I'm like, which part of America, which microcosm are you speaking of? Because America doesn't have a specific American way of doing something. And as such, I do very much believe that there are people in America who will boil their sausages without cooking them on a grill or something. As disgusting as that sounds. Just as there are some people in America who like raisins in their in their mac and cheese, which is something I've been seeing a lot of on TikTok, and I'm like, God, that's disgusting. But to each their own, man. You know, if you like it, you like it. I mean, I for one put cinnamon on my spaghetti, so can't really say that. Uh, um, can't really say that I don't have weird food tendencies myself. Ah. <sighs> So yeah, just bear that in mind if you're if you ever told something that America does this, just remember that that's not necessarily true. There are some things that I guess would universally fit America, but beyond Americans live there, I really couldn't tell you what. Uh, but anyway, enough about microcosms. Hopefully this has helped you understand a little bit. I don't know how much I'm going to cut out because I did get a little nostalgic there. But uh, you yeah, know, I might keep all of it in, might cut some of it out. Yeah, either way. But anyway, apart from that, let's move on to announcements for today. I know we're almost done with Borderlands 3 sequel, which will be great. I know I've got The Underdome, probably one or two more episodes left of Claptastic Journey. And then we'll be moving back into um, the Borderlands 2 to do the final DLC for that. Uh, apart from that, I hit 500 subscribers yesterday. Um, don't know how long it's going to last, but I hit it. <laughs> Uh, hopefully that'll stick around for a bit, and if it does, I will do a, um, I will do a, uh, milestone video next month, or next week. But, apart from that, 
that's going to be it for me for today. Thank you all so much for joining me for this episode of The Community Show. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And if you did, please go and poke that like button for me. If you'd like to see more from me, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And of course, as always, you're more than welcome to leave a comment in the comment section down below. And I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And when I can, if I can, you know all that jazz. And tune in next time for my dulcet tones. And until then, good night.